one starts off as most of my knife bag loading sessions go these days. I belly up to the workbench, I go through each drawer and pick out what I will need for that specific day and the menu. I've amassed quite the collection over the past 10 years of doing this and I'm super grateful for that. What's different today though is I asked myself the question, if I said yes to a nine month stage or a job opportunity where I had to travel, let's say internationally, to cook hypothetically without access to everything that is stocked here, what would I bring? What would be in my knife bag for the remainder of 2020? Do this. Now, without knowing how long I'm gonna geek out today with you, what's up folks, by the way, this video might turn into a long one. Luckily, YouTube has just launched a handy maneuver I can do with timestamps in the description. So you can kind of fast forward to whichever part of this video suits your fancy. I divvied it up into these categories because we're gonna cover a lot. So stick around for the whole thing if you want, no pressure if you wanna skip around, but uh, pst. I'm giving away some solid knives away at the end. I suppose we should start by acknowledging the Italian leather and Japanese denim elephant in the room. I got a new bag. This is the Edge Slim from Darkheart. I had my eye on this for years after I saw it on Instagram. I think they advertised to me. Most of you folks know I've been hunting for the perfect knife bag for months now. Nothing quite fit that right mix of carry effectiveness, flex of capacity, and quality of materials. And after some time spent with this, when I was cooking for guests, this is the closest thing that I've found. Opening it up here, the biggest standout feature of this bag for me has to be this double row of stitched inlaid industrial magnets with 16 pounds of pull force. This solves the problem that I had with the chrome bag with the pockets also being too small while also offering this kind of inverted mirror style layout where you don't end up with bulging handles on one side of the bag, tapering into blades with a lot of negative space on the other. Behind that, arguably to save in material costs but also to add another texture to the aesthetic, you've got this Japanese denim backdrop, which in my opinion, looks amazing. I actually used to own a pair of jeans in this colorway. It's like super super dark blue, which I think looks crazy clean with a really rich black leather. I mean, this stuff isn't the flimsy floppy kind of leather. It's legit, it's thick, it's well measured so that it's not too stiff or loose in any of the areas. The stamped branding is super minimal and thoughtfully placed. This piece just screamed quality from the second that I unboxed it. Moving on to hardware, these are G2 zippers and a gun metal finish. They weirdly match my aura ring, weird flex, but okay. And of all the details from the large pulls on the outside to the inner pocket having a leather pull on the zipper to differentiate the zippers, the reinforced stitching on the outer handle, it's optimal Optimized, it's clean, it's practical without being flashy. Here, check this out. The design on the lower corner as you're closing the bag is almost encouraging you to enjoy opening and closing this bag. The way it kind of swoops towards the bottom, but then it has this 90 degree corner at the top to prevent it from easing itself open if it's too full. Such an awesome detail. Take a look at the shoulder strap. This is a huge chunk of leather that's gonna support the weight on your entire shoulder, not dig into it on your commute. Plus the way that this is constructed, there's like the cutest, bit of padding in here. It's not just like two pieces of leather sandwiched and then sewed together. It's almost like they said, let's put eight goose feathers in there just for good measure. And it absolutely shows. Even fully loaded, I've never had issues with comfort on this. Now that being said, I know this has so far been puppies and rainbows, but the one thing that irks me about this bag, see where the attachment points are for the strap? They're not on the same side of the bag. There's a space between them. And when you do this shoulder style vertical carry, the bag tends to slip off of your shoulder unless you go crossbody on this. Now, if you're heading into a public transit or walking through the city, you arguably want things more secure and crossbody, but it's those little moments when you're taking the bag from your car into a building or moving from the office into the kitchen when you don't want it crossbody and it just ends up being kind of annoying, especially if you're like me and when you have the knife bag on the shoulder, you also probably have a big heavy box in both hands and you're constantly kind of doing this maneuver to keep the bag up. Two little wishlist items and you're gonna see how this first one isn't really a criticism, but because the shoulder strap doesn't have a good place to go when you go handle carry, it gets kind of dangly. Bravo to Darkheart for making it so that it doesn't touch the ground even when you do carry it like this, joke's on me. But I think about little tweaks to like sew one of those industrial magnets inside of the strap and have one of the uh, opposite side on the outside of the bag. So you sling it over and it just clips right on making this super clean and unibody. I don't know, maybe that's a pipe dream but I geek out about this stuff. Last up, the top of the bag doesn't technically close and seal as you can see 
here if you are team shoulder carry 100% of the time. I stress out living in such a rainy city with moisture getting inside of the bag. And if you go more handle carry, you gotta be more careful with keeping those smaller tools zipped up inside of the pouch to make sure nothing falls out if you're slinging this underneath prep tables or in and out of a locker. So that is the new bag. Let's chat through what I keep inside, shall we? Opening it up on the left side, there's my old faithful. This is still my favorite knife of all time, the green handled Ninox 230 millimeter slicer. I feel like it's a no-brainer that this still makes it into my bag. I know this knife like the back of my hand. I know its limitations, the comfort on it with the handle materials, the balance, the spine beveling is unreal. Plus, the steel is so high quality that this edge lasts longer than so many of my other knives. What has changed though is that I do use this super slim matte black cork sheath for it from Japanese Knife Imports. I picked this up last time I was in LA. Shout out to Jonathan. It fits super snug and keeps the profile low. I highly, highly recommend these. Next knife, this is the Togiharu 440 Petty. I like the no frillsness of this knife, if that makes sense. The balance with the wah style handle is comfortable. It's pretty stiff without a lot of flex, which is my preference. If this knife needs to do some light butchery tasks. The steel is really easy to re-up and it gets very sharp for most delicate board tasks that this will be required to do. I'm still rocking the Saya I bought with this until I inevitably lose the pin. Any takers on how long that'll take? For pairing tasks, I'm also on the Nenox train. Ninox? Nenox? This Corian handled pairing had an ugly chip in it when I got it from an old roommate. I reshaped the edge and it is super short now. It's super comfortable in my hand and I know I preach to use these little Victorinox ones because they're replaceable and it's not a disaster if yours gets stolen, but once you do some turned vegetables with some high quality, sharp AF steel that keeps its edge for days, it's really hard to go back. I've got a old school JB Print Saya on this from my CIA days. Last up, and believe it or not, this actually changed for me as I was prepping for this video. I had the Aura 2 chosen as the last knife in the bag, but I've been cooking a lot at home with the Bunka Black ZDP 189 again, and I think that's gotta be my choice for the veg prepper, the herb chopper, the give me two hours on the board to crush out some knife cuts blade. I love the way this looks. I love the feel of it. The blade height is great with that hammered finish so slices can kind of stack up and then effortlessly fall off as you work. I actually splintered a chunk out of the handle and I torched some of the bits. So it's got a cool textured black and brown look to it now. But yeah, those four knives are all I need. They fit great in this panel on the side. And I do move the paring knife to the other side of the bag just to keep it magnetically attached. But Justin, there's more pockets. I know, we're not done. Let's chat smaller tools and then we will head into the pouch, shall we? I had the huge pleasure of working with Chef Shota here in Seattle on some content for his Kushikatsu concept called Taku, and he's got me super into using Moribashi chopsticks again, and after forcing myself to use these, I'm a bigger fan than ever. So much so that these gorgeous beauties by Isaiah Schrader don't feel so unwieldy anymore. I'm super happy and also sad to say that on his site, as well as on eating tools, these are completely sold out, so congratulations, buddy, for making such a quality product. Sorry to you folks that you might have to be patient in order to cop a pair. Next to that, believe it or not, these are still holding up the custom wooden handled JB Prince tweezers from Iron to Adamant. I still prefer these. The handle is chunkier and more comfortable to use. Plus, I find that I stopped using the really bad habit of using my tweezers for unnecessary tasks because I treat these with more respect because I'm scared that I'm gonna like try to unjam a stuck together set of ninth pans and the wood is just gonna snap and fly right off and use another ninth pan or a tray or something, right? These are a pair that I picked up on my trip to Australia from from Chef's Armory. Todai is the brand, Japanese stainless steel, matte black colorway, indents for where your fingers pinch. It's got the tapered prong so that the textured tips touch first. And then if you need to squeeze tighter, you're able to grab larger pieces. Plus the kicker, Boom, they stand up without touching the countertop. Mind blown, well done. I do wish the steel was a little bit stiffer. I find myself having to adjust these so that the tips do in fact touch, but that's my only gripe. Last up to keep the gear from the knife department in check, my trusty black on black Mac ceramic honing rod. You are a channel OG if you can name that video. But seriously, this is a valuable investment. I've said it before, you can show up to work with a super sharp blade. As you crush out your list though, the edge is naturally gonna curve. If you swipe it on this, it's hard enough to get things straightened out and the grit is fine enough where you won't 
kind of have to stress about messing up your edge. I did just find out they make a slightly shorter version of this 10.5 inch one, and I might cop that one. But with so much to love about the features and the number of days that this has saved me time by readjusting my edge, this is the best honing rod that I've used. All right, zipping open the pouch. I'm calling this the pouch. Let's talk spoons. I've loaded up five for this hypothetical lose access to my toolbox scenario, starting off with two Lady Hamiltons. This is the serving spoon, as well as this one, which I've talked about before as being kind of the textbook tasting menu dessert quenelle spoon. After that, I'm rocking an iced tea spoon because they're probably my favorites to find while thrifting because it's so rare to find iced tea spoons that are silver or silver plated. And last, a line that I recently found and then fell in love with. This is a community spoon, but it's from their White Orchid line. I sent these out with uh, Patreon gear boxes a few months ago. The orchid is Anna's favorite flower. I just really dig that from the front, it looks like the orchid almost wraps around the handle. It's kind of like the infinity edge displays that phones are doing now, but this is like decades ahead of that idea. This size is also perfect because it won't tip over when you store it in a 12 or 16 ounce deli container, even if it's empty. Now, all of these so far have been silver or silver plated. This last one is not. This is the large slit perforated gray kun spoon. I don't normally use these, but I cop this at JB Prince and it just drains faster than any of my other perforated spoons. As long as you aren't doing tiny pearls of anything that might slip through the slits, I'm a huge fan of this one. 1810 stainless steel here. Staying, I guess, in the sturdy things category, this is the Get It Right Mini Spoonula. This is still my favorite silicone companion. That is gonna get taken out of context. It just works, right? Like the per it's the perfect height to keep in the bane. The tip flexes just the right amount. It lasts forever because there aren't any seams or detachable parts. And I know that I can easily clean out a stack of delis 20% uh, faster rather than using a spoon or a flat skinny spatula. Next up, new video means new matte fur. And this is the 250 millimeter length, which fits perfectly in the pouch and is also better suited to live in a Bain Marie. It's not too tall. I'm still waiting on colors for these tools because folks, when I use this to cook anything that has turmeric in it, goodbye to the white colorway. These stain super bad, but they last for years and they're crazy durable, so I ain't even mad. Last up, something I've covered numerous times and I'm actually stoked to see some of you folks make for yourselves. This is the curved Enox spatula. This is absolutely my preference as a palette knife offset combo. It springs to flip tiny portions of things in saute pans. Delicate twills are easier to work with. Plating in a really deep vessel is a breeze. Plus the look is kind of like industrial slash kind of vintage and I just really dig it. I don't think I have any other tools in my kit that share this aesthetic. All right, let's round it out with some random tools. The helpers, the small but mighty heroes of of your kit, the ones I always facepalm myself for when I forget them. First up, this is the Lava Tools Javelin Thermometer. I copped this with a spare set of batteries and it's lasted just as long and read just as fast as a Thermapen, in my opinion, all while being a fraction of the price and a fraction of the size when it's all folded up. I often forget that I do recipes that require me to take the temperature of sugar, or if I delegate the task of frying to someone, I find it really helpful to give them a thermometer to measure the oil. It's also got the nifty magnet on the back so you can keep it stealthily hidden or with Within reach on your station. Oyster knife. I've opened thousands of oysters at this point with this guy. Yes, the tip snapped off when I cracked open a gigundo Norwegian one back in the day, but I filed the tip down and it is sturdier than ever. I love the textured grip. I love that it's red. I love that it's contoured and it encourages you to leverage with the palm of your hand as opposed to using your fingers. And even though these days I'll use this for maybe like 20 to 30 minutes max for an event, it's worth keeping in the bag. Another killer tool that still gets to be a part of the gang because I have yet to find a better alternative. This is the Kuhn Rikon Peeler, the industry legend. These can do it all from delicate shaves to knobby, gnarly sunchokes. Buy a pack of three and you're good for at least a few months. The Town Cutler Cake Tester. Yes, this is literally a needle with a geometric piece of wood on it and I love it that way. I could have saved some space by using the little Ateco blue one, but this one is sharp. So poking plastic wrap bubbles with roulades is easier. I picked one that stands up straight when you flip it over and I keep this cork on the end to make sure that it doesn't unexpectedly greet me when I reach into the pouch. Gangi can opener. I cover this in my gear of the year for 2019. Go watch that if you want to hear more about this. The TLDR is no moving pieces, bottle opener, kind of like angled pry tool corner thing here. Really burly industrial construction and it all comes in freaking red, folks. Let's go. Scissors. These are new. These are from a brand called Silky. I actually bought the entire stock of these from the Masamoto shop in Tokyo at the old Tsukiji market. These are crazy sharp, stainless steel, and the most important thing in a pair of scissors 
you can tighten them. If you've owned a pair of Joyce Chen's that can no longer split a cryovac bag, you know what I mean. Last up here, matte fur branded bench scraper. I think these are just the best ones on the market, at least from my experience. These stay stiffer longer, they are thinner, so you can scrape more effectively, and the combo of having pointed and rounded corners basically covers all of your bases. I do want to cover a few honorable mentions to be on the record with a few pieces, but I really appreciate your attention and your time, so let's talk contest first. Skip ahead to here if you don't want the backstory on this relationship. Plus, there's a blog post about it if you just prefer to read the rules. So there's this company out of Seattle, just south of the city. It's called Genius Link. I've been using their software for years. They asked me to come have lunch at their office a few years ago. I'm a huge fan of the team there. The CEO, Jesse, has now become a friend. And Genius Link just acquired Kit. It's not kit.com anymore, it's kit.co. So long story, you'll have to ask Jesse another time. And one day when we were having lunch, he confessed to me that there happened to be some funds available to spend at Amazon Japan, and I said I might be able to help with that. Plus, with me being so behind on this video, a 2019 version never got made, I'm sorry. I saw this as a solid way to hook you folks up and kind of go big on this uh, 2020 edition, which absolutely is my preference with brand partnerships. Just to confirm, I'm not getting paid in any way to do this video or this contest. I wanted 100% of the funds to go towards these prizes and to making them as dope as possible. So let's talk prizes. We have a Suisun 240 millimeter K-tip Sujihiki, a 150 millimeter Misono UX10 Petty, and a Takayuki chef knife, all up for grabs. And I wanted to structure this so you can choose which one you prefer to win. I don't want you to randomly get something that's already in your bag, or if you really wanted the Petty and you all of a sudden win the chef's knife, I don't really want that to be the case. I've got kit.co's official link down below if you want to read more on the knives that we're shipping out, but let's talk rules. So you head over to kit.co, you create an account if you don't already have one and go freaking nuts. I mean, you can go super accurate and build out your exact knife bag right now, but you can also build out the knife bag that you would throw into the frunk of your Tesla if we're playing the blank check game. I have the exact kit from this video linked up in the description as an example to kind of give you some inspiration, and maybe a starting point. Then in the description, make sure to hashtag knife bag 2020 so we can find your kit. That is super important. If you hashtag that, you're entering yourself so don't forget that. Next, and here's how you customize it to your preference, if you want the Takayuki Chef's Knife, come back to this video, comment down below an unpopular opinion about gear or a weird preference you have with your setup. Mine is probably the fact that I use slicers over chef knives more often than not, or hating regular Grey Kun spoons, because I know they're super popular, but that's me. I'm not here to judge, I'ma secretly read the comments and judge you. But seriously, in that comment, if you have a kit link to share, copy the URL to your kit and post it as part of your unpopular opinion, and I will pick the funniest one, or maybe even the one that teaches me something about gear, and you will get the Takayuki. Because if you want the Misono UX10 Petty, make sure that the email you use to sign up for kit is also the email you use to sign up for my email list, because I'm gonna pick one kit at random and cross check it with my email list until we get a match. FYI, it's called Justin's List. I only send out solid gear picks from the month, articles I cover on my industry podcast, books I've gotten value from, and videos that I think you would like. My newsletter is not spammy, I promise. But let's say you want the K-Tip Suisen Sujihiki. That is truly in your hands because right up here towards the top of the kit page, you've got this little heart button here. The most liked kit that hashtags KnifeBag2020 is gonna win that 240 millimeter beauty. With this one in particular, we will obviously not include anybody that does something clever with bots to overinflate their likes. I just hope this encourages you to explore that hashtag and see what everybody from this community is loading up because there's a dope knife on the line. Yes, it's an international contest. Yes, it starts now and it goes until May 1st. I hope you have fun with this one. I'm really looking forward to hearing your quips about why you chose what you chose. And I'm even more eager to see who comes out on top as the most liked kit once you folks play around with all the features to customize the look and the aesthetic of how your kit feels. All right, I promised I would talk runner-ups. This is specialty gear that I would probably buy again in that hypothetical work scenario that I'm hypothetically in with this knife bag. But the thing is, they don't exactly fit inside of the Edge Slim. That's the pro and the con of this bag. Keeps me minimal. A handmade Bain Marie. I'm amassing quite the collection of these. I really enjoy storing my tools in these on my station for easy access. This one is from a maker out of Wisconsin, and I really just dig that it's angled and gives the illusion that it's flush up against the wall while I'm working. None of my other Banes do that. Next up, 
no surprise here, the Ben Reiner mandolin. This comes with me everywhere. It's also in my gear of the year 2019 video, the new ones with the rubber foot on the bottom. Sharpies and pens, absolutely no brainers, but these are more often than not in my Pelican case. I did a full video on that setup. I've really been enjoying these clickable pens from Muji. I don't know why, but I gravitate towards really thin pens right now, and these feel really great to use. The Sharpies that I'm using are the pro version, industrial style. Stocking and using these is also a really easy way to tell yours apart from everyone else's in the kitchen. Silicone whisk, this still comes with me a ton, and this is almost like a durability update on it because I don't always think quality when I shop at Crate and Barrel, but this one has held up great so far, plus it folds up super thin and springs back to life, which is so hard to find in balloon style whisks. This little fine mesh spider is a game changer when frying chips or skimming meat sauce, but it also works great in service as a little strainer to have on your station for things like consomme or gelays when you're glazing desserts. When you're in full TSD mode, you don't always want to bring a big clunky chinoise on your station. And having this just to strain out bits from one container to another is so clutch. I got this one in Japan. Look for this next time you go to a restaurant supply store. Punches. These give you tons of options when it comes to unique cuts. Everybody be shingling mise en place these days. And I think getting a set of these plastic ones is a no-brainer to have in your kit. Last up, I do a lot of grilling, open fire charcoal, bean choton style cooking, especially now that the weather is getting nicer. And I'm a huge fan of these paper fans. If you've ever started seeing stars when inhaling and blowing your lungs out to try and stoke a fire or made a janky fan from cardboard, this is your solution. Its handle tucks right back into where your apron meets, so it's always on you to keep the fire going. I think I got this one from Corin, but it's a dope color, right? All right, this has arguably been my biggest gear video of the year. It's absolutely the most expensive prizes we've ever given away on the channel. Shout out to the team at Kit for being so awesome and agreeing to do this with me. We're super stoked to hook you folks up. If you made it this far in the video, I would really appreciate a gentle nudge on that like button. It certainly helps me out. Subscribe if you wanna see more gear videos like this because I make a lot of them. Thank you so much as always for your attention. My name is Justin Kana, and I hope you have a good one.